Oh, why are you here? I've been doing my research internship here for like nearly three months. Didn't you remember me? Oh, okay, you're Khalil, right? Yep. Oh, okay, so here is Khalil. Hey, uh, guys. He's, uh, he has done his master's in Saarland University from Germany. And now he's doing his internship here with us in the Open University in Netherlands. So I would guess I will leave it to Khalil to give a short intro and background of what he has been working on. Yeah, so hi guys, uh, name's Khalil, Khalil Ashraf. So um, I'm from Malaysia, which is like really far, far away from here. And uh, why am I here? Okay, before that, a little bit of background of myself. I was raised in, uh, I was born in Kuala Lumpur, the capital city of Malaysia. And now, and then I did my bachelor's back in, uh, I mean, also in Malaysia. And I was working for one and a half years in uh, there and I, and then I've decided to um, like pursue my studies in, in masters. So that's why I've decided to, you know, like try something new, do it somewhere outside uh, from Malaysia. So, and yeah, I chose Germany. So yeah, and uh, currently I am doing my masters in uh, media and informatic, which means like media plus computer science in uh, Saarland University in Saarbrücken. It's, it's a German name, but it's English, it's, you call it Saarland, so yeah. So, okay. So, was Germany your only choice or did you compare different countries before? I mean, how did you make a decision to okay. uh, move to Germany okay. and... It's a pretty interesting question because, mm -hmm. uh, yes, the first uh, to answer your first question, yes, Germany was the only choice uh, when I when I decided to, to pursue my masters. Okay, yeah, the, re the reason why is okay. It's a little bit cliche, but I did this uh, Euro trip with my family back in two thousand and twelve. So we went to some European countries like Italy, uh, France, mm -hmm. um, Belgium and Germany. Um, there is no education fee in Germany. Um, oh, well, a few years back, uh, it only applies for the government universities. So mm -hmm. yeah, that's in order for you to get into the government universities, you need to master, you need to master the German language for like at least three levels, even though you're doing masters. That's what I remember, I'm mm -hmm. not entirely sure, but yeah. And then now I th it applies for like most majority of the universities in Germany, even the best ones. Yeah, that's true because yeah. some of my friends also say a lot like about this yes. free education yeah. in yeah, Germany. Yeah, true. It, yeah, you get free education and you only have to worry about the cost of living in Germany. Mm -hmm. I mean, of course, if you compare from my country, Malaysia, uh, if you compare the currency, it's always going to be the, the, the significant difference right because in Malaysia if you compare to Euro it's really expensive uh, same if here you, for yeah, India also. true if you work in if you work in Germany you earn here everything is pretty much normal so yeah especially for where I came from in Saarbrücken it's a very small town and everything is relatively cheap there so mm -hmm. yeah and as you are doing internship here in Netherlands mm -hmm. so yeah. What made you to like uh, move from uh, Germany to Netherlands okay. for this brief okay. short internship? Okay, so um, when I was living in Saarbrücken, it's kind of near to the border uh, in Germany and France. Mm -hmm. So now I'm doing my internship here in Heerlen, Netherlands. Yeah, just sorry to interrupt. Yeah. Just to add some context, like because we are now in the south of Netherlands. So in the south of Netherlands, you are very near to Germany and Belgium. So in that way, he is like... Uh, it's I very to convenient. To I had to move. So I, I had to move from southwest of Germany to northwest of, yeah, to north of west. Okay. It's called Aachen, mm -hmm. which is like an, a town which is really near to the border. Yeah, it's uh, like, like Germany and 15 Netherlands. 15 or 20 kilometers from here. Yeah, about half an hour by train. Mm -hmm. It's not, a, not an issue for the travel. So yeah, so now I'm living in Aachen. 
um, travel every day to do my internship here. Reason why I came to, uh, I've decided to do my internship here in Kerlin is because, um, well, the place here in Open University, uh, they are currently working on the topic which relates to field of my interests, mm -hmm. so which is human computer interaction. So okay. I thought about giving out giving out a try, and also I have a friend that works here. And also, why I mean uh, I mean uh, that I came here is because to gain uh, some new exposures like. Mm -hmm. I've been living in Germany for like two and a half years, roughly. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to, you know, get some new insights of working outside of Germany. Yeah. So just like I have decided to like from Malaysia to Germany. So now since I'm living in Germany for like nearly three, nearly three years, and I was like, okay, let's try something new. Let's yeah. try Netherlands. See how it works there. So yeah, I mean, okay. that's how I got here then. That's a pretty interesting story. And Thank you. <laughs> so can you give a like a brief overview of the requirements that you have like uh, for applying to Germany? Okay. The I mean just keep it brief because okay. I know there are like a huge it's, list. And it's really it's, it's really just the main important points that okay. one must consider. Okay. When... One the, f the the most important thing for you to uh, to do for the requirements to come to Germany is uh, of course, you need the admission letter from your university. When when you apply, you need to get the confirmation and stuff like that. And then once you have, uh, once you got accepted, you will need to prepare. Uh, you will need to get a student visa from 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 your. Own. I mean, there should be embassy in in any of your countries. Which in Malaysia we have German embassy as well. So I don't. I, I hope they, they. It's it's scattered everywhere. So, yeah. So, uh, one of the requirements for you to get your visa is you need to have, um, you need to be financially prepared. You need to have the amount of, um, the exact amount is 8,640 euros. As of 2019 or 18. Yes, that's, uh, uh, I've done some research a few days ago and it's still the same. So it's, okay. Yeah, okay. it's the same. It's the same like I, had last time as of this yeah, year yeah yeah true and that amount of money you need to have it inside your german account so to transfer to yes the you need to you need to create a german bank account i'm not sure if this applies for uh, every country but for mm -hmm. malaysia uh, i think also also in yeah, india. yeah it's also same yeah. for india i know people who yeah they have to create like a specific they don't really have a choice to choose which bank that they need to use so it's for us for for our countries we need that to create a deutsche bank account mm -hmm. so you have to do it um like for, through online application and you need to send documents and stuff like that it, um yeah once you have your bank account created then only you can transfer the money then you can apply for your visa so i i gotta warn you it's a really it's quite it's quite a long process, so, so yeah. Plan early. Plan early. Plan early. So you, my mistake was it was kind of like a last minute thing. So I was like, uh, but yeah, luckily I managed to pull it off. But yeah, just plan your um, visa mm. really, really, really early. And I guess you'll also need the transcripts. And oh yeah, if the proficiency, English proficiency, well, or it's yeah, optional. Yeah, that is. Uh, but before we get to that, um, if you are doing your masters, you need to show the transcript uh, of your undergraduate studies. Mm. Okay, so yeah. if you are doing your bachelor's, you don't need to show anything, but you need to have like uh, I think the level of German proficiency, which is C one. But bachelor's outside Germany or no bachelor's. Inside? In, in Germany. Okay, if you're outside, then obviously you give everything. But if you're in Germany, then you don't need the transcript. Uh, that's, I I, I think so. Mm, I think okay. So. Yeah. Okay. But if uh, if you're coming out, if you're from foreign countries, if you're coming to Germany doing mm -hmm. your bachelor's, then you need to have that sort of um, certificate to mm -hmm. go 
uh, to get accepted. Okay. Okay. And what was the level you mentioned? C1. C1. Okay. C, I think C, I said C1 or C2, but okay. it's like more than three levels of German. Yeah, so I think that means you should be pretty good. Yeah. Otherwise yeah. Really I mean, good. if you have lev- if you have C1, you can actually have a com- have a normal conversation like what we are having right now. Mm. Yeah. For, for masters, um, in my country, it's optional for you to take the German language mm. um, because you don't really need it for your visa because now mostly master's courses are in English, right? Mm, so you yeah, don't yeah. really need German proficiency. But I would suggest you guys yeah. to learn German in because um, they uh, it's, it's a pretty huge country so they would it's a very really developed country so they would want you to speak their language i mean it's not a bad thing if you don't speak english but yeah i mean if you can learn german it's fun <laughs> yeah it's fun yeah even i mean like many i have heard from many others also like the when you apply for jobs mm-hmm. most of the yeah. places you need like a yeah. Germ- you have a german interview yeah. or something and yeah. you have like german cv or something like, yeah i think that applies for for like uh, not for the bigger cities. Mm. If you go to big cities like uh, Munich or Berlin, okay. I don't think German is required. But mm. if you go to the smaller towns like Saarbrücken, mm-hmm. where I came from, then you really need to okay. have German proficiency. Okay. And um, also for um, English, uh, this depends on your universities. Like in my case, I don't really need to show the proof of my uh, English proficiency. proficiency. So something like you gave like TOEFL that's or TOEFL, IELTS. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, but I think most of the universities in Germany, they require to provide, even if they didn't ask you to, but you, you should at least provide that you, that, yeah, that you have some sort of grades for your English mm-hmm. uh, level. So yeah and okay. and what is the idea recommends oh, okay uh accommodations uh this is i would i think this is like a i mean this is already a huge topic in itself yeah. but you can just yeah. tell it very briefly it's um okay of course when you move to another country you need to make sure you have a place to stay right so um if it's your first time it's okay to to struggle i mean it's hard it was hard for me as well but I would suggest if you want to go for this accommodation, get a shared flat where you have other people living. Uh, something like an apartment or? Uh, yeah, apartment. And, but you have uh, roommates. Okay. You have other people yeah, living yeah. there as well. You can get a single flat, but for first timer, I wouldn't suggest that because it's... Mm. Uh, expensive. It's, it's, n- it's not only really expensive. Uh, price so wise, the, the convenience. Experience. The convenience. Um, okay, I was first I was living in the shared flat and then I moved to a single flat. Okay. So when I first moved to a single flat, you need to have your own contract for electricity. Oh you need to God. have your own contract for Wi-Fi. Mm-hmm. And then not all single flats are furnished. Oh, okay. So this kind of three things you need to take into consideration if you're going to move to a single flat, mm-hmm. which I don't really recommend for, for first timers. Mm-hmm. So get a shared flat, mostly they are furnished and since you have roommates with you you don't have to worry about the electricity and also i mean wi-fi is optional but nowadays you need yeah wi-fi right so if you have like three or four roommates you you gotta you gotta expect there should be wi-fi connection i mean if you're a student then you need connections right so yeah and if you uh, compare the rent price, I think most places in Germany is cheaper than Netherlands, right? Uh, yeah, that's what I have been. Uh, I mean, I have also realized heard that. Yeah. I don't know exactly. Yeah. What. I mean, um, before I moved to Aachen, I was looking through uh, places to stay in Hirlen. Okay. Okay. And then I was uh, doing a little bit of comparison, and I was like, "Wow, this is really expensive." I mean, and, and one thing to add is that Hillen is one of the cheapest places in Netherlands. Yeah, so yeah. you can imagine. I was, told, the... I was told, yeah. So, and then I was, uh, at that time, I was a bit reluctant to proceed my journey to uh, to, to Hillen mm-hmm. because of the, uh, the prices and yeah. yeah. So, and then uh, one of my supervisors said that you can actually still live in Germany, but you can travel. Mm-hmm. And then... The, the 
and also another another thing is at that time, I think you also get the travel allowance right like, yes yeah. yeah travel allowance is also um, so um that's okay. support yeah the thing is at that time i was thinking about the price of the flat which is quite expensive and another one is to well since i was i'm living in germany for two and a half years i need a residence permit mm -hmm. so usually when okay uh we have to track back to the previous for the student visa when you get your student visa for malaysians we only have we only get six months mm -hmm. six months of uh the, the the validity so after that when you move to germany and before it expires you need to apply for the residence permit card okay which gives you two years at least mm -hmm. but once it's uh i think it depends on your study yeah, period yeah right? and if you let's say if it expires and then you have a reason to extend then they will extend for another year or okay. until your passport expires so um yeah so and then uh since i already have a residence permit card in germany if i have to move to Heerlen, if i if i want to live in Heerlen, i have to make another residence permit card in netherlands so that would be another process for me to go through. Yeah, that's true. That's which true. is really. I mean, changing countries is yes, the least yeah. option you yes. should keep you're, unless you're right. it is really you're necessary. Right. Like, so I was a bit um, uh, unsure of my uh, decisions at that time. I think it was like two weeks mm. of uh, like I was trying to decide like should I go or should I sh or shouldn't and stuff like that. And then when my supervisor said you can actually still live in Germany. So nice. you you just have uh, you can still travel and everything. I was like, okay, yeah. Since I already have that residence permit come from Germany, I don't mm -hmm. really have to uh, do another process of uh, making one. And then it's cheaper in Aachen compared to here. Yeah, yeah. So the it works both ways. So okay. I was like, okay, let's go to here then. So yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so let's move to the maybe the German. I mean that is again like a huge thing but we are just covering touching some points like the about the German education system. education system okay totally different than Malaysian mm -hmm. education system yeah I can expect so it. yeah so um, well for my master's program in Salon University uh, well it's like more uh, you will have this like this weekly assignments mm -hmm. okay and this um, well if it's weekly assignments the submission should be in weekly basis right yeah so and um, this assignments overall assignments it won't be counted as part of the final grade okay so you will need to do this assignments it's compulsory let me tell you but why it's not part of the grade it's not part of the grade let okay. me tell you why it is okay. important okay because this uh, these assignments they have grades mm -hmm. and you need to get at least 50% of those 50% uh, of the grades of all of those assignments to be eligible to get into the final exam oh it's, my god it's an That's admission to the final like, exam yes yeah. it's true it's totally different than Malaysian tech education system so, so I think here also like if I reflect it to our education mm -hmm. system and during masters mm -hmm. uh, the assignments were actually helping to get the grade. I yeah, mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you you learn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. No, no, no. I mean, like uh, they were part of the grade. So if we okay, do fifty okay. percent, so I see. the way that it was divided mm -hmm, was like mm -hmm. suppose there are different courses mm -hmm. with different requirements, mm -hmm. but some have like thirty percent uh, for the assignment, for assignments, thirty percent for project, and maybe forty yeah. percent for exams. Some yeah. subjects even don't have exams. Ah, okay. Only okay, assignments okay. and projects. Yeah. But the good thing is assignments is always like suppose you get nine point out of ten point maybe that is ten percent okay, of your grade okay. you already I got see, not I like see. I mean in that sense I feel like I was thinking like the Dutch education system mm -hmm, is mm -hmm. even tougher because the grading system is very conservative okay. but now I feel like the German yeah what do you say like it's only qualification and for then the, you for the for exams exam. and I think yeah. it's really even yeah. tougher like. yeah even even if you get into the final exam and then the total grade of the final exam is 100% mm -hmm. so if you fail the exam you fail the course okay so uh, but the, usually uh, I mean these kind of cases they will give you re-exam mm. so you will have re-exam like few months after the, the yeah, final yeah. exam we, we also have that yeah and also you will only have three tries for, for, for each subject so mm -hmm. if you fail the first exam you fail the re-exam you will have to wait for another year for the next yeah for the same, same, same yeah same okay. year. yeah yeah so 
Yeah. So I mean, it doesn't apply for any uh, for each yeah, for yeah. every courses. That's true. But most of the courses in my university, mm. and I'm not sure if any other universities have the same system, but I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I think. Have. I mean, there will obviously be some subtle differences yeah, yeah, within yeah. them, but yeah. this is yeah. what is. Yeah. And apart from this difference, do you notice any other difference based on the discussions we had? Like, uh, you mean um, between Netherlands and Germany? Well, I would say the cost of living. Okay, that's the rental, what we yeah. also said yeah. before. Like, yeah. So um, I I don't think I ha- I have. I um, think it's not whole Germany, but maybe most of the Germany. Because if you go towards Frankfurt and Munich, yeah, of I course, think, of course. If you compare the big cities, then yeah, 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 it's a different story. But in general most of most the, yeah in general i mean i don't i mean germany is already huge so yeah of course i mean i don't really realize the much of the difference because mm-hmm. i've only been working for like only two and a half months so far it's a uh, three months i think yeah so yeah um i would say the the rental the cost of living in in netherlands is significantly higher than than, mm-hmm. than in germany so okay yeah and by the way if you are thinking like uh how you can contact him everything will be below in the description yeah yep. and below description and you will uh, you can also post your comments yep. so we'll try to answer them yep. slowly yeah and just to wrap this up we will end up with the final question and that's like uh which I ask almost everyone, like okay. any advice that you want to give for people who are planning to come to Germany to okay. study in the future. Yeah. Well, first things first, make sure you get a shared flag. That's first thing first when you come to Germany. And um, I would, there's also a thing here in Germany where you have to prepare. You need to, um, there, it's called uh, Rundfunk. It's you have to pay roughly 15 euros every month for the subscription subscription of the TV and radio channels. Hmm. Even if you don't ha- own a TV or radio, it's like it's like some is sort of like, taxes and stuff like that. Is it like because you have internet, so it is attached to it? No, no, it doesn't. It, it's so independently even if you stay in a house, you need to, to pay that. Yes, disregarding yes. that you have. Yes. A, a that's TV the thing. Or... That's the thing about living in 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 if you live. Uh, alone, okay. you will need to pay the whole amount by yourself. Ah, okay. If then you live in a shared flat, you can like share shared, this yeah, amount. Yeah. You can share this now amount of money. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, um, well, it's it's the regulations. I mean, if you live in Germany, you need to pay this amount of money, even okay. though you. Well, if you are, uh, if you're gonna pay for it, if you're gonna make it worth it, then get a television or radio or something like that. And yeah, in my case, I don't really need it because yeah. And I think finally the yeah. Um, of course, learn German. It helps. <laughs> so all of you who are not believing, because I've said in many previous videos yeah. that uh, the language is a major thing if you compare Netherlands to Germany. Yeah. Most people just at the time, some people believed it and some people wanted to see someone from Germany saying yeah. that. Mm-hmm. So now you have a living proof <laughs> yeah. of someone from Germany yeah. who is giving you this advice. Yeah. I mean, um, if you have any, any of you have any more questions and stuff like that, and just yeah, contact uh, me on, on description. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you, I'm thank you very to, much. Happy to help. Yeah. Thank you very much no worries, for no worries. giving your time for yeah, yeah. everyone out there. No worries. And glad to help. If my you fellow. if you like this video, then don't forget to smash the thumbs up button and share this video among all your friends who are expected to come to Germany so that they will know. Yeah. in details about all these things yeah. and don't forget to subscribe to the channel till next videos Peace. see you guys <laughs>